you everyone. Thank you everyone. Uh, okay, first of all, sorry I brought my own and it's laptop because it's supposed to leave your office. No, no slides at the top. No slides at the top. Can you get the slides at the top? Or yeah, it's just one of them. Fantastic. Can you mind the Yes. Let's have a look. Yeah. So we good? Yeah. We good. Because I was tempted, and Sam, don't even. I was really tempted to present on that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really interesting space to present it. Uh, so, Mr. G, so the squeeze hand, you tell me your cybersecurity strategy. First of all, apologies, I brought my own Linux laptop with the files installed and the software installed to make sure this works. As you've shown, and it's the, not the first time this has happened with Linux, that doesn't work. So, I've got no notes to work off. So sometimes I might be as surprised by the next slide as up as you are. So let's hear it goes. <laughs> uh, first of all, with a caution uh, to get through time, especially peace on the way, massive oversimplifications in this, massive conceptual loops. Um, whereas I might say something like it's a solid idea and opinion, it's just like a working theory I've got for the season. Uh, you have questions at the end. My contact details will be at the end. I, am, I will be here and I expect you are the last people to leave. <laughs> All references will be blogged eventually, to be honest. Uh, also, I happen to be the person at the front with the microphone. This doesn't mean I'm the most knowledgeable, the most important. I'll run through the slides and my ideas, especially with pizza inbound, but then I'm very interested in what you think. So who I am, basically, I've had all these jobs, and I was going to run through this slide much quicker. However, as per Hint's cat's comment, uh, about networking, um, and about what you should say to the panel, what you should say afterwards and talk to people, I've got about half of those jobs just through people I know. The f at least, I think the first and second Hint's job was just, I only knew those jobs existed because of the people I knew. So do you make the most of networking opportunities like this, the kind of thing that I will ask for all the time. I've worked for these companies, this doesn't really matter. The important thing is I've been in cybersecurity for 24 years. It's not really changed that much and it's not getting any better. And I'm, <laughs> I've spent the last four years at least trying to figure out why. Unlike Chris, is here. Chris is back in software, which I hope is okay because that's on your profile. Um, really good presentation on what you can achieve, really honest about where she's come from and where she is now. Um, if you're interested in that idea of perseverance and just keeping trying to recommend the book, Grit by Angela Duckworth is worth reading. However, unlike Chris, my presentation is basically why you or we or I should just give up. So not, not the most inspiring presentation. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Is the effort worth the return you'll get out of it? With regard to certain aspects of cybersecurity. So first of all, I'm interested in what you think a show of hands. With regard to cybersecurity strategy at the highest and most abstract level, which do you think is most important? Technology, people, or processes? So first of all, who thinks technology? The things you buy, the things you build, the things you code. Is that the most important aspect of cybersecurity? Show of hands, please. For those of you following along at home, I think that was none. <laughs> people. So the people you hire, the people you train, those of you at home and at the front know and bother to wait for me to finish the sentence. About 95%. Um, those of you process what you do. Right. You, 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 and I think you are maybe you. You're all my new friends because you're all right. <laughs> Process is the most important part of cybersecurity, especially, I would argue, strategy. What I mean by strategy, you could do an entire presentation on what strategy actually means. I would say, as per Wikipedia, setting goals, turning the attack action to achieve those goals, and then mobilizing resources. For me, the thing that a lot of definitions miss out is prioritization. What do you do first? What do you do in which order? Where do you devote your resources? That's what strategy is. And to me, that comes under process. For me, 
You meet opponents, especially superior opponents, you'd argue we will face as per Christian Becker's experience with the Shamoon virus. His better strategy is how you win, as far as I'm concerned. My reasoning for being interested in this is strategy is the CISOs, the most important cybersecurity, the most powerful cybersecurity practitioners within your organization. CISOs are equivalent, call them security managers or whatever. And it's also to be the most interesting part of that job, especially at roughly 150 to 450,000 pounds per year, maybe more. The problem is being a CISO, and those rates vary by uh, location, city, and so on. As I like to say, this is the most interesting part. Unfortunately, being a CISO isn't figuring out a strategy. What I want to do is decision support for CISOs, because I want to help them think about strategy, all the other stuff like the public relations and being a scapegoat and things go wrong, I'm not interested in even for those salaries. So I'm thinking about decision support and cybersecurity strategy for CISO, so that very highest level. How do you beat these superior opponents where do you go your resources? So let's look at the industry, what's been tried so far. First of all, technology first. Just buy the best stuff. Either it's the best stuff or the cheapest stuff or what you saw in InfoSec Europe or whatever. If there's something bigger and better, then you buy the bigger and better technology. The problem with this is that's the cyberscape from Momentum as of Q3 this year. That's all the vendors and the areas. That's not even all the products. So if you want to buy the best product, well, do you prioritize identity and access management over endpoint security for a start? That's a strategic decision. That's not about technology. Also, which vendor do you use to know which product from which vendor and so on and so forth. Also, the problem with technology led strategy is total cost of ownership. People buy and completely forget. Total cost of ownership being training, people having to learn how to use the user interface of the technology. The interconnections, the new technology you buy will have to interface with all the other new technology and the old technology you use. There's a cost to that. Incompatibility, especially things from between vendors won't work, even things with the same vendor. Cisco springs immediately to mind. Just won't work. This um, technology first, or technology focused strategy hasn't worked. Next, as per 95% of the people in this room, it's really interesting to screen with people above me. Um, should you favor people? No. Uh, if uh, people make mistakes and you can't train people out of making mistakes. That's how people work. So a uh, really good presentation on this by Kelly Shortridge. Only I think at the moment the PDF and her blog on this is up online. It's just how people make mistakes. We need to take a safety focused or safety minded approach to people. Build systems, put in processes so people don't make mistakes. Stop trying to train people not to make mistakes, especially things like phishing. Please click on the 99% of emails that do with your business, but magically spot the one that's not. It doesn't work. Also, hiring the best people. I've been in this industry for 24 years. There are not enough people with enough talent in this industry to solve their pro problems purely by hiring enough people. And there never will be. Stop. Next. What's the next strategy? I think, favor process. The reason I do is this paper, some of you will see me quote before. This paper is genius. The base of sound problem, 1991, Rand Corporation, did a lot of work with DOD, Department of Defense, US Army. The authors of the paper realized their industry, operations research, war games, military analysts, are too focused on kill rates, kill ratios, the size of planes, the number of tanks you have, are they bigger and better than the Soviet Army? What? Who they'll be fighting over the Rhine, so on and so forth. Then they actually do analysis of previous battles, as they say. Some of you have heard me quote this before. Battle outcomes have historically borne no relationship to the raw force ratio. It's not just biggest army wins, in any modern complex kinetic conflict. So what matters is the ratio of effective forces. When they uh, summarise the issues, the first one they mention, to paraphrase, the evidence of history, and these, people, these are people who've studied conflict since going back, looking back into Roman times. The first sort of determinants are the soft factors. Command control, processes, tactics, strategy. It's what you do with the technology and the people you 
God decides whether we win or lose in any conflict. I would argue, and these experts agree. So what else have we tried in cybersecurity? What's the strategy funding mentality? Makes sense. If you protect everything and build thick enough walls, you can't be attacked. So where has the bunker mentality got us? Problem is, attackers aren't attacking everything. Attackers are like uh, exploiting like five percent of vulnerabilities, according to recent reports from Penn Security, backed by academic research. So spending, you're trying to spread your resource over one hundred percent of your attack surface. If attackers are only going to attack five percent, it's an incredibly stupid and wasteful strategy and optimistic. Also, it turns you into the department of no. As a cybersecurity team just says, we can't do that, we don't have time for that, that will be vulnerable, therefore, uh, we don't have to, the resources to the risk, therefore, don't be online. So your business goes around you, your business uh, creates shadow IT. And with shadow IT, not only is your infrastructure more secure, because it's more insecure, because it's not your infrastructure, it's someone else's infrastructure, but also, it might not be as resilient as your infrastructure. So when Gmail goes down, as it seems to do annually for about half a day, you laugh. Because your company's not affected, because you convince the business not to put anything on Gmail, except for your staff are using Gmail. Also, bunker mentality is based, is similar to the padlock, the universal symbol of cybersecurity in your presentations. A padlock doesn't fight back. If I give you a padlock, you will get through that padlock eventually. Even if you're one of the spoons from upstairs, it might take a couple of years, but you will break it. That's no way to defend anything against superior attackers. It's just, well, we'll build a thing and take as much time as you want. The next thing people say, especially on Twitter, is back to basics. So let's look at the basics. CIS top 20 security control, the basics on the web. <coughs> there you go, inventory control of all hardware and software, continuous vulnerability management of all your vulnerabilities, and control use, so admin privileges, and secure configuration of everything, and maintenance monitoring and analysis of everything. As I say, I'm quite old, I've been in this business a long time, I've not heard of an organisation that's managed all those. The basics aren't basic, please stop trying next. In a, to back me up, in a personal conversation I'm creating with permission, the CEO of Thinks, Harry Mia, says, because actual facts on the ground that trying to make the basics work hasn't worked, but, um, that's the evidence we've got. And people haven't managed to put it off for the last 10 years, so why do we keep trying? That's not going to work. DevOps, I think, is amazing. And arguably, security is part of DevOps, or DevOps has dragged security into the kind of speed that DevOps is, even as DevSecOps. So does that strategy work? Along with Dev, DevSecOps and DevOps, is everything is code. Therefore, all security needs to be code as well. Everything security does needs to be code. Also, because DevOps developers work so damn fast, and really so damn often, it all has to be continuous. So that's what you need to do as a security team for this kind of security strategy. Problem with DevSecOps is it's difficult to do if you're not a clean slate. It's really good for startups and scale-ups, it's not good for established organizations. Also, you need time to become a DevSecOps organization. It's very hard to do if you've got established infrastructure. So this, this strategy is not universal. Also, everyone is in developer. I can also argue, and this is another present, uh, full presentation, is everyone shouldn't be a developer, or everyone is not capable of being a developer, therefore stop trying. Also, it's not universally applicable. For some organizations, at some scales, it just does not work. It's not the best method for them to use. Those of you, I recognize a lot of you from the uh, security side, those Simon Wardley's work. And just how lean, agile, Six Sigma, waterfall are applicable to different organizations and at different stages in their development. Same way with DevOps. So DevSecOps is not a universal strategy, not a universal solution. Also, it's all consuming. You either, your organization is either DevOps or DevSecOps, or it's not. You can't kind of half do it. So if it doesn't suit all your organization, that strategy does not work. Next, trying to solve this, I looked at academic solutions. Um, just using one article to represent the few I looked at. Decision Support Systems Journal, and an excellent, I mean this is, this is literally what I'm after, wanting to be decision support for CISO, wanting to figure out the strategy. Decision support approaches to cybersecurity investment. 
that's, uh, this is exactly what I'm after, what have they figured out. Summary of the abstract, inflation summary to managers need effective decision making strategies, spot on. So the authors of the paper are going to look at game theory, look at combinatorial organisation and a hybrid of two ideas. It's written by two professors and three PhDs. Great. Very smart people, very difficult subject, they'll have the answer. So I like game theory being theory. <laughs> theory game theory makes all sorts of assumptions about knowledge and the situation and intention. I have, again, it's another talking about itself, I have massive issues with game theory being useful in, in a real world context. Also, combinational organization, I've got the term in my notes, I can't see, but like multiple choice, multiple objective knapsack problems and finding Nash equilibriums. Looks great. I have no idea what this means. And I started trying to figure out what it means, and I have no idea what it means. This, I, this looks really impressive, but it's not a strategy, it's not a solution. If any of you look at this and go, yeah, I've read this, this makes sense, I'm very interested in talking to you afterwards. So as I've said in presentations before, I think metaphorical, an analogical way of solving this problem. Find other people who have problems similar to our cybersecurity problems, see how they've solved it, especially in conflicts. Especially when you're facing opponents. How have they solved the problem? Find an analogy. It's like a hack, it's like a shortcut. Rather than trying to figure out the academic paper, just find someone who wins fights. If that fight is enough like the fight, we're all in it, so the fact is day to day, we'll figure it out. Because analogies haven't worked before. We've regarded our networks as castles. How do you, how do you make a castle more secure? Make the towers taller, you make the walls thicker. But the problem, with the, castle, uh, the problem with the castle is the centre of the padlock. The castle just sits down and gets attacked. And eventually you'll get through into a castle. Also, you can't run a business out of a castle, as many of us have learned and many of our users have learned. Now, this approach is unusual, but I always quote this to back it up metaphors for cybersecurity from Sandia National Labs, uh, written in 2008. Um, worth reading, but a really good summary. Think about cybersecurity from a metaphorical perspective. And I've come, I don't know if I forget the proper word, but I'm putting metaphors, similes, and analogies all together as one, and just running with the idea. It lets us understand our current approaches and gives us creative new approaches. So I think this is worth doing. So I've been thinking this way for the last few years, and I think, or I thought, I found a solution. It's a seeding of an idea for counterattacking, reacting to your opponent, focusing on your opponent is how organizations win conflicts in many different situations. Because castles don't work, padlocks don't work, you will get through to them in the end. It's about interacting with an opponent. It's about turning an attack into a fight, into a battle. So I'm thinking about this, look at Iron Grave divisions. From World War One, I, I thought World War One sort of after, I think Christmas 1916 was pretty static. Part of the reason it was static is the German military had an iron group division, which means you take over their trenches and they've got divisions lined up and be prepared to take those trenches right back. So as soon as an attack is successful against them, they beat that attack down and take over what the ground they've lost and kill several thousand men in the process. So that worked. That's part of the reason why World War I was so horrific. Right, so counterattacking, what else is there? Uh, chess, nice simple representation of conflict. Uh, and I always I want to learn from the winners who's best, who's winning these conflicts. So, who's the best chess player? It's Marcus Carlson, lost his stuff I could say about basically the number one statistically ranked, the best chess player in the world. You read about his strategic mindset. How does he win? They list the quality he has called nettlesomeness. Through chess analytics, people realize. Players against him make more mistakes than they do against anyone else, against any other opponent. He force, he's not just better than anyone else. He makes his opponents make more mistakes and takes advantage of them. Look at my favourite sport, American football. Saying, so, right, who's best at that right now? You look at the league, you look at who's got the most wins, it's the New England Patriots, yet to lose a game. A ridiculous points difference. In eight games, they've scored 189 points in the opposition. I think I didn't have time to check today. Their defense, the team, the half of the team that's not meant to score has scored as many touchdowns as all their opponents in eight games. They are ridiculously good. According to advanced American football analytics, 
DVOA coming from the Football Outsiders website. This is the best defense on an American football team since statistics were good enough for Football Outsiders to analyze this in 1986. You look at the New England Patriots, you look at the uh, head coach Bill Belichick, you read about his strategic approach at the highest level, so the thing they always say about him is he adapts to his opponents. He doesn't have the one strategy he sticks to, unlike most of the other teams in the game. He will neutralize your strengths and he will exploit your weaknesses, is what they say about him. And I mean, he's won six Super Bowls and lost several more. Um, amazing coach, arguably the best coach in the league. But in the UK, so I should look at the, I noticed Chris said she was into football earlier, the other football, <laughs> I mean, soccer. So who's doing well in soccer? Uh, look at the Premier League, Liverpool, again, have not lost a game this season. I, they are playing against Arsenal right now, I think, but not in the Premier League. I decided not to check the result before we started. Look at their head coach, or football manager, Jurgen Klopp. Look at Jurgen Klopp. Watch Jurgen Klopp's main strategy, Gegen Preston. Gegen Preston basically means as soon as your opponents have the ball, you attack them. Not that you step back, you get into formation, you cover the passes. It's as soon as your opponents get the ball, they know you're after it. So they don't have time to figure out what they're doing. That works in soccer. So what do we have next? Look at cybersecurity. The product you're all protected by. Things to canary, you put it on your network. It's basically a honeypot with a decent UI. So when attackers stumble across it, they don't know they've stumbled across it. This thing tells you there are attackers on your network the first step in instant response. Thing is, you're all protected by this. How many of you use things to vary on your network? For those at home, that's the show of no hands, which I really will be disappointed by. But you're all protected by this, as uh, Sean Shaw explains. One of pen tester, Bob Randy Hunter. Um, the concept of canary tokens, which is like a virtual version of things canary roughly, means when he's attacking the network, he slows down because you might have a canary or canary tokens, the virtual equivalent, on your network. So just because this product exists, attackers are having to be slower because you're interacting with your brand. This, a thing to know doesn't make your network any more secure, it just slows your attackers down and gives you a chance to start an instant response. So then uh, I'll start to look at other things. There we go. The uh, Dowling system. This is basically why the RAF won the Battle of Britain. It's not Spitfires, it's not Hurricanes, it's getting the right fighters against the right bombers immediately. You look at Tech, the reason Arslan Ash is the world champion is because of what's called the whiff punish. When his opponents make mistakes, there's better tech than some sort of something that basically beats the crap out of you. You make a mistake against Arslan Ash, he will win the competition, and that's why he's the world champion. And I see this over and over, and I start thinking, you know, I'm, I'm amazing, I'm a genius. I've sorted cybersecurity, I'm a thought leader. It's counter-attacking, that's what we all do. Because I've seen it in so many places, this is the winning strategy. Or, this is the Bible Meinhof illusion. Which, actually, you've heard of the Bible Meinhof gang, by a show of hands. Say four or five. This will be interesting because a lot more of you will hear of them in future. 1970s left wing German terrorist group. Because the Bader Meinhof illusion is more commonly and professionally known as the frequency illusion. Someone noticed that they noticed the Bader Meinhof group existed. This was in like the 90s or 2000s, after the Bader Meinhof group had been eliminated. But just because they were attuned to looking for the thing, they saw the thing more often. So I'm attuned to looking for counter-attacking. I think it's the real solution. I look through lots of different conflicts and I find counter-attacking everywhere. Is counter-attacking the secret to winning complex conflicts? Or is this just a frequency illusion and I've looked for a thing and I keep finding the thing? It's so it's not the winning strategy at all. So I need to prove this is winning the strategy. I made a quick list this afternoon of things I've made notes about, things I need to learn. I think this is roughly uh, 10 lifetimes and impossible. So I can't prove this is the winning strategy. So is the juice worth the squeeze of trying to learn all this? 
So this, as this kind of presentation, this is the big finish. I should give you all the answer. It's the juice worth the squeeze, how to determine your cybersecurity strategy. My answer is I don't know. And I'm interested, I repeat, so whenever it arrives, or brings some whatever, as to what you think. Because I, like I said, you could spend several lifetimes figuring out strategy. The military is still figuring out, and it's literally, you've got organizations like the British Army, who've been fighting for, and have been particularly, let's say, adventurous overseas. have been fighting for hundreds and hundreds of years, and still haven't figured out strategy in a relatively simple conflict, because it's based in 3D physical space. Cyber warfare is so much harder, cyber warfare is so much more difficult, so if the military haven't figured out, like chess strategy is almost impenetrable unless you spend all time on it. And that's chess, that's 64 squares and two sides. You don't know what assets you've got, you don't know who you're against, you don't know what terrain you're fighting on. So maybe the juices are worth the squeeze. Like I'm having a really interesting time looking at all these different conflicts, but really maybe 95% of you are right. And it's just, we'll just hire the best people and we'll do the best we can. And maybe that's the best we can do without somehow in the cyber security, uh, the problems with hiring cyber security people finding 20 strategies so we'll go pay to sit in a room. Maybe that's something Sammy Aranko can afford, but not, not the rest of us. So my answer is a question I don't know. So I'm interested with the scarily big finger, especially up there, that was quite impressive. Um, I'm interested in what you think, I'd like to have you discuss it now or by email or over Twitter. Thank you very much. Is there any are there any questions? Oh no, yes please. Yeah. Hello. So how much do you think the strategy is the CISO strategy? Because I think the CISOs know what they want to do, but they are not allowed to do Oh, why should I kept the microphone actually should I? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the question I think came through was how much is the CISOs know they want to do but can't do it? I mean like I say, the point I made is I just happen to be down the front with the microphone. I don't know. Again, I'm interested in what you think. Well the CISOs have got the right ideas and just the board won't let them do it. But whether especially I mean those of you like me have learned some of Wardley map. Simon, I mean, and I said this at the Open Security Summit to Simon Wardley, I said, because he's been, re if you watch his presentations, he's been really dismissive about managing consultants, and said, well, no, no one knows what you're doing, it's not strategy in business. And I said, are you just a bitter old man? <laughs> and he said, which was nice that you could talk to him that way, he said, no, it's just these people worth thousands of pounds don't know what they're doing, they just make things up and sell it, and everybody does it because everybody else does it. In the same way I think with CISOs, that might be the case. At the moment, I don't know enough CISOs to know if that's the case. So that's, so the answer to your question is I don't know, which is not the best answer, but it's the most obvious answer. Next. We've all grown nature in the panel, which, and speaking of which, I will give you guys a chance to, to ransack the rest of the drinks. We may feed you, we may feed you another day. Uh, we really have the most of these great co have been incredible folks and are uh, just as hungry as you are, I imagine. Uh, but what we may well do is, is grill Nick and Chris um, and Ali, who I'm going to introduce shortly during our panel, um, which I think we may as well just jump ahead with, and we will uh, let you guys grab a drink, go to the bathroom and stretch your legs. We'll then resume, and then if pizza arrives, we'll take a serendipitous break to eat. If not, we will finish early and send them on your way to grab food. And we will promise to feed you next time, maybe, so, <laughs> ten minutes? Yeah, take ten minutes, and then we'll be ready. Thank you guys.